Okay, let's do this thing. A full walk around of the reincarnation of my truck cap camper being converted into a slide-in camper. So we'll start uh, right down here at the door. Turn on the lights, get a little bit of light in here. Let's start over here at this end. This is what's called Grandma's Attic. Uh, it's a little area that goes over the cab of the truck. It's only about, I don't know, 18 inches, 20 inches deep, but it affords tremendous amount of storage. I picked up these little brown baskets from the container store and they just fit in there just about perfect. They're held in place with a little bungee cord and uh, awful lot of nice storage area and easy to access. I put my clothes up there, I put some foodstuffs up there, whatnot. Over here is my residential dormitory style refrigerator. Runs on 120 volts, runs off the inverter. Uh, with my batteries, without any sun, I can run this thing about a week with no problem. To secure it, I made some little brackets and screwed them right down into the countertop. And there's obviously two in the front, two in the back. And the uh, refrigerator is incredibly solid. It just doesn't, doesn't move at all. Now if I happen to be plugged into shore power, I have an outlet right here. And the cord for the refrigerator simply plugs into that. If I'm running it boondocking or without shore power, I just plug it into the inverter. Next to this is a little panel that I made with USB connectors to charge telephone and laptop and whatnot. A cigarette lighter for whatever device might need cigarette lighter plug. And then the switch for the water pump. Underneath here lives a 30-gallon water tank. And that puts the weight well forward, middle of the truck, which is good. 30 gallons times 8 pounds per gallon, about 240 pounds. We'll get into this whole side of the trailer in a, a little bit. The big change that I made on this truck camper was moving the sink. Originally the sink was mounted right next to the refrigerator and it just didn't give me a lot of counter space. The other issue was the counter only extended to about this area here and then there was a carpeted area for some storage which I never used. This time I ran an eight foot countertop all the way across. Also I made it much deeper the last uh, incarnation, the countertop was about as wide or as deep as the sink. I had about an inch behind it, an inch in front of it, and it was really small. Once you add my Cured coffee maker and toaster and food preparation, there was no room at all. So I moved that out 24 inches this time. Now what that did is it made an incredibly narrow alley or aisle between the bed and the countertop, but, but that's fine. I've got about, I don't know, 16, 18 inches. I'm not doing calisthenics in here. I'm not dancing in here. I'm basically preparing food, dressing up, and going to bed. Uh, when I'm using the camper, I'm spending upwards of 90% of my time other than sleep outside of the camper. So I just don't need that kind of space. Up above I have a small shelf with some bungee cords that holds various things. Folks are asking how do I cook. This little stove right here is one of the best things I've ever bought. It's available from Amazon for well under $30. It comes in a nice plastic carrying case. It runs on propane or butane. But let me tell you, butane is the way to go. 
These little butane cylinders can be bought in bulk. One cylinder I can do seven or eight meals. And what I love about it is when it comes time to put this thing away, this little unlock fuel lock switch has to be in the up position and that disconnects the butane cylinder. So the butane cylinder is not connected. When it's time to cook, you push down on this butane, this, this little lock unlock, and it forces the butane cylinder forward and connects it. And then it's just a simple matter of turning it on and hitting ignite. That's it. Nice clean butane fire. Time to put it away. Just flip that up. The butane cylinder is disconnected, no chance of it leaking. This grate comes off and gets turned over. And it goes back into a nice little plastic storage box that I store under the bed with a bungee cord. Very, very nice piece of kit. Now I also carry a little electric hot plate with me if I happen to be plugged in and I don't want to use this stove. But I'll tell you, even when I'm plugged in, I'm using this stove. I like cooking on gas rather than on electric anyways. And I prepare some pretty amazing little meals in this little camper. Down here, I have a switch and an LED, and that runs a ventilator fan for when I'm cooking, just to exhaust fumes. There's a door on the outside that opens up, and I exhaust all the uh, cooking fumes and whatnot out. I put an indicator light on it because I constantly was leaving it on, so now it shuts off. We have storage. Lots of storage now because in the past I had all the water tank and everything right here mounted under the sink, under the, uh, it actually was the sink at that point, and really had no storage. I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up, but now the water pump and everything is all properly plumbed with PEX. PEX tubing even lets me be a relatively good plumber, and I hate plumbing. The sink drains into a five gallon jerry can. I don't know if you can see that. And I also have a connection right here so that I can run a hose outside to a water heater, a propane water heater for taking showers outside. And again, place to store utensils and whatnot. For a bathroom, I have a porta potty. I've owned this porta potty 10 years, I've never used it. I don't care where I am on the road, off the road, here, there, I'm always able to find bathroom facilities. Uh, I was gone for three months. I did 16,000 miles on this trail in this camper this past summer and uh, never had an issue. Never had to use this porta potty. I've had this porta potty on a boat and in like two or three campers and never used it. But I keep it just in case, you never know. Over in this corner, I call it my entertainment corner. I've got an Insignia TV with a Roku connected to it. I use T-Mobile Home Internet for my internet connection, or I have an AT&T hotspot and a Verizon hotspot. So I've always got cellular connection. Even when I was out in the middle of the desert in New Mexico, I got cellular. Uh, my remote controls are mounted on Velcro, a little Sony DVD CD player, and we're good to go. For electrical, I have two electrical strips. One is for shore power, and one is for inverter power. And again, another little control panel that has a USB and cigarette lighter connections. It also has a temperature probe, and that probe goes down to where the plumbing is. Uh, I camp sometimes when it's very, very cold, and I just want to know how cold it got under the cabinet rather than just in the sleeping area. And this little panel flips up so that I can access electrical down below. That's where the shore power comes in from outside the trailer and I just wanted to have access to that. I do have an air conditioner. It's a small air conditioner. I have 300 amp hours of batteries and I can run this air conditioner. It's a 5000 BTU for about six or seven hours, obviously depending on ambient temperature, but that's at around at around 90 degrees, I can run it about six hours. It doesn't take much to cool this little camper off. That works really, really well. So let's move over to the other side of the camper. 
I've got a medicine cabinet over here that I made out of some mahogany. Over the window I mounted this shelf system with some more containers. Uh, it's simply locked in place with little door hooks. Now, I sure wish this was automatic because I can't tell you how many times I forgot to put these hooks up and I take off and all these containers crash to the ground and uh, everything that was in them is all over the place. I never put any liquids or anything in the in these. It's usually canned goods and bread and stuff like that. But anyways, that's what that's all about. And that just locks it in place. The bed. This is a queen, uh, sorry, a twin size bed. And this white thing you see here is a trucker's heated mattress. This is like being hugged by your mama. It's the best thing there is to warm yourself when it's really cold out. It runs off a thermostat. And it is, gr it is fabulous. You put your sheets over it and you put a blanket on top of you and it is just marvelous. It doesn't draw much current. It works great. Mattress is a uh, one of these foam jobbers and that works great. Now this bed flips up. Now here's another thing. Most people when they're building these truck campers they're gonna put this particular wall right up against the wheel wells. I didn't do that. I wanted more storage. So this wall is much further into the camper than most people would do when they assemble one of these pickup truck campers. And as you can see, the cap itself is completely tied in to the floor. So when I lift this cap off with my gantry crane, the entire floor comes with it all in one piece. I've got enough room down here for a 2000 watt Honda generator, a whole bunch of other stuff, my charbroil grill, which I use an awful lot when I'm camping. That's an infrared grill. All the wiring runs along this wall back to the power panel. And over here I've got three 100 amp hour batteries in parallel the 300 amp hours of battery power. I built this box and it's heavily insulated and it's heated. I used a heat pad that you would normally use on your water tanks to keep them from freezing. And I have it hooked up to what is called a PID. And it, if the temperature gets down to about 36 degrees, it kicks on. And once the temperature gets above 36 degrees, oh, and by the way, that's the temperature in in the battery compartment. And if you look right here, you'll see a temperature probe is attached to the one of the wires that leads to the inverter. So not only can I tell what the temperature is inside this box, make sure that it's not too cold, although these batteries have cold, uh, have freeze protect, they will not charge under 32 degrees, which is great. But anyways, I can also see the temperature of that wire that's feeding my inverter in case I'm drawing too much off the inverter, which I never do. Um, this inverter is 1500 watts and the most I pull out of it uh, is with the air conditioner, which is about a thousand watts. Very efficient uh, inverter. I've had three different inverters in here. The first one was only a thousand watts. It wouldn't run the air conditioner. Now, it barely ran the coffee maker. This, this coffee maker and toaster that I have over here, by the way, these are hotel units. They're designed to only use 750 watts rather than 1500 watts. Most hotels don't have 20 amp circuits in the rooms, so they built this type of equipment just for hotels. They're both 750 watts, which is, you know, which is fine. So anyways, the first inverter didn't have the balls. The second inverter had a fan that would come on all the time, and it sounded like a Piper Cub airplane in here. It was terrible. So a friend of mine installed it in his motorhome, you know, in the storage compartment where he can't hear the, fur, the fan, but this, uh, Giandel inverter, uh, which Will Prowse highly recommends, is just awesome. Anyways, I have a disconnect. And then over here, I've got a fire extinguisher. The garbage pan 
has a little bit of Velcro attached to the back and a little Velcro strip there and that just holds the garbage can from moving around. I installed these little uh, struts that I have, happen to have from another project. And they just make opening this bed a whole lot easier than before. It's, it's a little heavy. This mattress isn't light, but now it's easy. Over here, this area is held on by just Velcro, a couple of pieces of Velcro. And that's where I have a propane tank, 20 pound propane tank for the Olympian Wave 3 propane heater. Another amazing piece of equipment. A uh, little bit of a concern that folks have about carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, moisture, or whatnot. I put vents, one down here, and then another one over here under the TV. When I'm using this propane heater, I open both of those vents. I do not get one single drop of moisture in here. I have a CO and a carbon monoxide detector over here, which absolutely doesn't go off. In fact, I took this carbon monoxide detector and I put it right down here on the ground next to this heater, let it run for hours, never went off. I don't know what all this carbon monoxide thing's all about. We've got a clock. We've got inside and outside temperature, which is pretty neat. And then my piece de resistance is my solar system. I'm pretty proud of this. I have three solar charge controllers, and why three? Well, I bought the solar panels at different times, so they're not matched. The first one, the MPPT15035, I have four 100 watt panels on the roof in series. It's 400 watts. The 120, is for two 100 watt panels in series on the roof. And the 7515 is for a flexible flat panel mounted on the angle on the front of the camper. Uh, three circuit breaker switches for shutting them off. And they're labeled 200, 100, 400. I went all Victron. There is nothing like it in the world when it comes to solar. All these units communicate together through Bluetooth. They all communicate into the monitor, which is a shunt-based monitor. It's just magical equipment. I also have 200 watt bifacial panels, portable, that I made. And I have another, a fourth Victron Smart Solar on that too. And that just simply plugs into the side of the camper. If I happen to be parked in the shade and I for whatever reason, I'm not getting enough solar, I can deploy my 200 watts of solar outside. Uh, we have a main power shutoff switch for everything. This is the GNDEL controller for the inverter. And then we have cabin lights, the DC to DC charger turn on. This DC to DC charger is 40 amps. It's hooked up to the truck's battery uh, through big heavy a uh, two-gauge cable that goes from the truck all the way back here. And to turn it on, I just flip that little switch there. Uh, all of the USB chargers are on switches. No reason to have them on if I'm not using them. They'll draw power if you're not using them, by the way. Uh, the battery heater, which is, this is the PID. This is the device that turns the batteries on and off based on temperature. As you can see, it's 54 degrees down there in the battery compartment right now. Uh, and I have some outside lights uh, in the back of the camper to light things up. Again, we've got USB connections even over here to charge things up. And we've got Anderson connectors over here for all kinds of different things. I like to use Anderson connectors for most of my connections. In fact, the, um, the, the mattress pad, I remove the um, cigarette lighter and I put Anderson connectors on. These Anderson connectors don't fall out. They're just never an issue. They're incredibly secure. All that wire goes down and into the rest of the camper. When I did this countertop the last time, I bought flooring from uh, Lowe's. The problem is it wasn't waterproof, and the problem is it didn't seal. The boards had a little space in between each board, um, a little reveal. 
and water got in there and it swelled up and it was really kind of a mess. This is flooring also, but it's waterproof. It's to be used in wet areas, bathrooms and whatnot. Um, there is no space in between and it kind of looks like cutting board, bowling alley, I don't know what you can sell it. Interestingly, it was on sale, $31 a package. I needed one package and one board. So I ended up with a whole bunch of extra boards. So I decided to wrap the entire camper with that material and boy did it come out nice. Because this whole back wall of this camper must have had 50 different holes in it from various users. You gotta remember, this, this camper is 50 years old. It was built in the 1980s. And uh, that really cleaned it right up. Now, originally, this entire back wall is on a hinge. These camper caps were designed that you could open up this entire back wall and get a snowmobile in here or an ATV or whatever, if obviously if you didn't have the interior built out. I don't have that option anymore. I've now tied and bolted everything together. I have big aluminum plate 